host Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Coming here with the new series we'll be doing, of course, on the Chris Voss Show. Be sure to tune in to all our comparisons. Um, this is going to be a phone fight between the iPhone 4S and the Samsung Galaxy S3, which is the latest phone to come out. Now, given this comparison, we're going to be very long, and of course, we're going to try and move very fast through this so we can uh, not take up too much of your time, but we want to be really thorough, so that's really important, I think, to our listeners and readers and watchers. Um, one thing to bear in mind that does have to be said about these phone fights and versus fights is that the iPhone 4 is at a life that's about, I think, nine months into its rotation. And in just a few months, it's July right now, in a few months in October or September, it's rumored the iPhone 5 will be out. And the uh, Samsung Galaxy 3S, S3, if you will, has uh, just come out. So uh, in terms of, you know, the rotation of... Uh, life of a cell phone and the quality and what goes into the guts of it and the OS operating system. There's OS 6, of course, coming out soon in October, September-ish for the iPhone 4S. It's, uh, you, you do have to bear that in mind when you compare these phones because they tend to leapfrog themselves in technology based upon when their products is issued. That being said, let's get into the differences in the phone. Now, you can see here, of course, the iPhone 4S has a glass display, and it's got a hardware build of steel or some sort of material around the edges. Uh, I think most people are familiar with how their system works. They've got speakers on the bottom. They've got uh, sleek sides down the side where you've got your SIM card area there. You've got a power button on the top, microphone, and, um, and uh, earphone hole. And then, of course, you've got sensors, a front camera, and then you've got your uh, up and down buttons for volume rockers and your turn off and on sound uh, mute button, if you will. So you also got your docking station in the bottom with the giant docking station. On the back you have the glass once again and you also have the um, iPhone lens with a flash. Now I have added a, a thing that well magnetized my lenses to this so this is a stick on that normally wouldn't come with your iPhone. Um, so uh, this is the iPhone. It's a very hard, very solid build. Um, doesn't take the drops very well. We'll get into that in a second. So. Let's take a look at the Samsung. The Samsung has a very beautiful screen, as you can see here. It is very plastic. Um, you can tell the front and the back are very plastic. The black back has kind of a steely metallic uh, issue, but we'll show you this here in a second, where it's just a piece of plastic. In fact, well, we'll pop that off here later because it's kind of a project when you pop it off, but uh, and and not a deterrent anyway. Uh, you've got a power button on the bottom. You've got, I think, a microphone hole at the bottom. We also have a microphone hole at the top, so we're not sure if it has dual microphones or not. You've got an earphone piece here at the top where uh, you can be plugged in. You've got your speaker in the back. You've got your uh, camera eye and your flash. And then you've got a rocker button on the side, the left-hand side. You've got a power button on the right-hand side. And that predominantly covers all the buttons with the Galaxy S3. Now, in comparing the two, in comparing the two that are that are here, um, let's talk about a couple different things just in body and style. When it comes to hardware build, the iPhone 4 is much more classic, much more heavy duty. Um, it's probably um, it just feels like a solid rock in your hands. It feels like quality. It hefts itself like quality and holding it but given that, it is a thicker build than when it comes to the iPhone Galaxy S3. One thing I've loved about the Galaxy S3 is it almost feels like a little frisbee. And I've been kind of holding like this, I find, a lot of the times, which is kind of fun. So uh, the builds are a little bit different in size. And, of course, you can see here, if we compare the screens against each other, the screen size is freaking huge comparatively to the iPhone 4 S. And hopefully the iPhone 5, when it comes out, will of course be remedying some of this situation and making the iPhone 4 more competitive when it comes to screen size. So, let's talk about that. Now, drop-wise, if you are to drop the iPhone, it is glass. It takes one or two drops to shatter it, uh, if not one good drop to shatter it, and you will shatter usually the whole screen. Once a piece of it shatters, the whole thing usually goes. 
Um, there's chips and divots that will come out, so it doesn't respond and drops well at all. Now, a lot of times if you're lucky, it will land on the uh, metallic side bases um, and it'll be fine that way and survive at least one or two drops. What we have found though with them is usually the first drop tends to create a uh, weakness in the glass and the second drop is what will shatter it. Um, sometimes you just take a chip out the first time you drop it. But if you do drop it, it does seem to continue to work and, and uh, you can usually still work and operate the iPhone. It's very funny that you can shatter both the back and the front and the majority of the time we see it, it will still continue to work. So that's very cool. In drop tests that we've seen with the Galaxy uh, S3, we've seen that uh, the screen will stop working uh, on drop tests. Uh, if you shatter the screen and break it, you'll have sometimes limited, uh, limited viewing. Uh, it'll kind of mess up the whole operation of the screen. Now, it is plastic, which is kind of an interesting way of going about it. Now, the one thing that you do have with the the iPhone or the Galaxy S3 is it has an attachable back. Let's see if we can get the back open. And with the detachable back, you're looking at, uh, like I said, a very plastic, you can probably hear how tinny that is, very plastic background. Now, what is nice about that is if you do drop it on the back, uh, you're very less likely to shatter it. It might break and it's probably easier replaceable, but you could live with it. It does have a removable battery, where if you want to remove the battery, you can take and do that too. The other nice thing is you've got your SIM card location there, but you also do have a place where if you want to insert a, uh, a micro SD card, you can take and do that. And you can add memory, which if I recall right, is up to 64 megabytes, anywhere from 2 to 64 that you can add to this. So uh, there is that nice thing where it has the feeling of plastic, um, but it does feel very solid. I got to tell you, I don't feel like the phone's kind of a plastic uh, piece of junk. It really does feel like quality, especially the the glass, the front, it, just the build. It, it it doesn't come across as something where the quality might be in question in any way. Um, but when it really comes down to it, you do have the durability, the classic durability, of the iPhone 4S, and uh, everything else with it being a uh, tough phone and something that you know weight wise feels very good in the hand it's very comfortable in the hand uh, depending upon your hand size that may be something that you choose to do I find the uh, Samsung very comfortable but I have a nine inch hand if I had a woman's hand I might have a very different and I had a very small hand I might have a very different uh, view of that so depending upon what your tastes are and how big your fingers are and your hand span uh, that can make a difference. Swipe screen is very uh, easy and cool. It's one of my favorites on the Android. I don't have to take any rings and push them or any of that kind of BS. Uh, you can swipe anywhere on the screen and pull it out of reset mode. And of course when you have the iPhone 4S in reset mode you have to do a swipe in one place. Um, so let's talk about, uh, we've talked about build. Now with the two phones the 4S only has a 3G service um, and you can find it on uh, most of the carriers now uh, with I think except for T-Mobile currently and even that's supposed to be changing soon so uh, keep in mind the date of this video with the Samsung what you're looking at is it's got 4G LTE and this actually happens to be an AT&T 4G LTE phone we love the AT&T 4G LTE service it does very well uh, little or no drop calls from our experience that we've had the phone uh, and we've tested a variety of phones on the ATT 4G network. Um, so we love the LTE service. Works great, great for data, downloading, uploading, all that sort of good stuff. We don't really want to get into carrier comparison here. But we do love the phone, and that's what this uh, phone uh, comes from. You can get this phone on Verizon and I believe on the other carriers. So uh, it is available, and it's available, I believe, also in the UK. So it works really good from that standard now once again in talking about the timeline leapfrog comparison this is 3G this has got 4G if you're the sort of person that that's important to with data calling you're using it for that uh, this might be the better phone for you with the Galaxy S3 because you're more data intensive you you want to get your downloads faster all that sort of good stuff that may be a deciding point for you in comparing the phones and that's going to be a personal decision that you're going to have to take and do um, Screen wise, the screen wise is really nice. You've got, of course, the Retina display with the iPhone 4S. And with the Retina display, everything is clear. All the uh, little 
digits or dots, if you will, uh, in the screen are rounded. Uh, you can see a very clear, very clear, clarity filled screen uh, with the Samsung S3. I'm very happy with the screen. I think it's beautiful and it looks really, really, really good. But when, you, uh, when it comes down to it, you're looking at uh, it still, you can see the dots in the screen. It is not written in display. It is beautiful. At this time, we have the brightness turned up all the way on the Galaxy S3. On the iPhone 4, I don't think we're fully up all the way. But uh, So you're seeing the screens as they are. When it comes to screen movement and speed, uh, they're both very fast. The processors are really fast. We really enjoy them in the Samsung and, of course, the iPhone 4S. Um, with the iPhone 4S, you're pretty much limited to the icons and folders sort of uh, system. With the, um, with the Galaxy S3, you're looking at different widgets and apps that you can take and put into the system. Um, and you can take and control it that way. Let's see if we can't get into some of that. Um, where you can actually create different apps from the uh, system and widgets, actually that you can put onto the area. You've got your apps here and you can of course create folders and then they have a widget area where you can create all sorts of different widgets and different things that you can put in. Um, so that being said you've got that availability to do that with your screen. I, the one thing I do uh, hate about um, the Android model is it, it's harder for me to find stuff. I have to go through too much work to go find stuff. Um, I like the iPhone. It's very quick and easy to find stuff. If I need to search for something, I can take and do it. I have a lot of apps, so I like the icon approach better with the Apple over the Galaxy 3S. And and actually, that's a whole Android thing that I that I just like. It's just more convenient with the iPhone. Um, some other things to get into here. So you've got the widgets. I like the home button much better on the iPhone. It's big. It's easy to find. You can find it in the dark. It's got a big old divot, so you not only have the ability to find it, you know, touch-wise. Um, you know, I mean, you can always find it. It's just a big old button. This button is a little thin. Uh, it lays kind of flat against the uh, surface of the phone, and so I have a, I had a hard time. I had to keep looking to see if I was on the button or if I was over here. The one argument uh, or problem that I seem to have with these Android phones is this back button issue and the and the menu button and what you have to do to go through. And like sometimes if you're holding the phone, you press the back button, you end up going back. You're like, I didn't want to do that. I need to go forward again. I hate that menu system. Uh, I love the simplicity of the iPhone 4S and the iOS menu system. It's very simple, which makes it very problematic free, where if you're playing a game, you can easily flip out a game with the Android product. Um, other than that, I mean, it's a great little product. It works well. Let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about the keyboard. Let's get into some of the keyboard issues that you can take and have with the um, with the with the product here. Let's get into say email, and we'll take a look at the keyboards. Now the keyboards are very similar in their build. This is the Samsung keyboard that's here. It's on the Android keyboard. Um, I love the um, keyboard on both of them. They're very big buttons. But the nice thing about the iPhone. 4S keyboard is the buttons are a little bit bigger and for someone with bigger fingers like me, bigger hands, it, it's, uh, it's much more convenient on the iPhone 4S. Now given that, the uh, Siri, the voice activation system that is on uh, the iPhone 4S uh, has a real problem hearing me, understanding me, and uh, it, it's just a real butt and almost useless for someone like me. It really has a hard time understanding me. With the Android, especially the ice cream sandwich launch, with the Android using the voice uh, activation or the voice talking to be able to text and stuff, it does a much, much better job. I like it 10 times, 100 times over Siri um, with the voice. And the beautiful thing is, too, is it will play out what I'm saying as I'm talking. And I really like that because I can see where the errors are. Where with Siri, you pretty much say what you want to say, you cross your fingers and you hope she gets it right. So the one thing I do love about the Android product, and, and this works with the Galaxy S3, is the ability for uh, the uh, system or the voice uh, texting, voice to text system to work and accurately uh, transcribe what you're saying. Where Siri, I mean, it's just a <laughs> good luck. Uh, finding out what you want to find out. So we like the keyboard there. Um, 
Now, of course, the the uh, iPhone 4 does have the Siri product that's there, and it's kind of interesting, but it's very buggy. Uh, it's very inaccurate. Like I said, it has problems understanding what I'm saying. They do have a system on the uh, Galaxy S3, and this is developed by Samsung, and it's called S Voice. And it's not the most greatest system in the world. It kind of has a, a weird little thing where you can see the uh, you can see the voice volume of me talking there. We have to press the button to activate it, which is another step that you have to do. Um, Checking my sources. You can do different commands with the Galaxy S3. If you want to wake the phone up, it will respond to different voice commands. I haven't played with it much. Um, it's kind of an interesting little toy. I don't know. Um, I, I've heard different opinions about it. You can test it out and see what you think. Uh, I'm not real prone to either of the voice testing and voice commands and all that good stuff. So um, so there's that with the Siri voice. Uh, let's take a look at uh, camera options. Now with camera options, the iPhone 5 trumps the Galaxy S3. Now they're both an 8, eight megapixel uh, back camera. The Galaxy has a 1.9 uh, megapixel camera on the front. Um, and the thing about the different cameras is uh, they're very good. I mean, you, know, you can't really complain about the camera that is on the uh, Gal or the Galaxy S3, I should say. Let's take a look at the cameras here. Now, with the iPhone 4, you're, of course, relegated to uh, pretty much the control of the device. You can't go in and change iOS settings, white balance, stuff like that. You can't really do a lot of controls. But the the uh, lenses that have gone into the iPhone 4 really make up all the difference in the quality of the product and uh, you get really great solid pictures. Let's compare some pictures side by side. One thing that's interesting that really bothers me about the Samsung Galaxy S3 is you notice the difference that it took there for us to go from the camera mode to the photo mode. Watch how long this takes. Well it took a little bit fat. it was a little bit faster this way. Let's go out of it and let's go back into it. Alright, so there we go, and then we go to that. Well, it seems to move fast. It seems like the first time you go into it, it moves really slow. In fact, I've been wondering if it's even going to process um, when you first do it. And obviously, it's in multitask mode. So, um, let's take a look at some photos that we took comparison side by side. Um, now, with the photos that we, we, we took on it, uh, you can do a numerous amount of adjustments, but here is a natural photos between the iPhone 4S and the Galaxy S3. You can see here the quality is much different. Now this is a low light situation um, and we found that the iPhone 4 performs very well in low light situations and in flash situations. We found the Galaxy uh, S3 does not perform very well in a flash and low light situation. In fact it does very bad as you can see here. Um, these phones are taken from the same distance, the same shot, uh, same lighting uh, at the same exact time pretty much um, and uh, you can see the difference in the quality there let's take a look at a video that we took and did you can see here here's a video of let's see if we can play the two of these together this is my dog in her doggy bed you can see here the difference in the quality and just being able to see anything on the phone now we've got the brightness turned up all the way on the on the uh, Galaxy S3 to be fair to it. Let's take a look why we aren't bringing that up. I'm not sure where, I'm not sure where the Galaxy went at that point. Alright, there we go. So let's go back into the thing and let's try this. You can see here there's there's just the, the quality is just awful on the uh, on the uh, uh, low light situations for the uh, Galaxy S3. Now here we are, we're going to be out in the light with this shot. Let's see if we can get everybody going the same way here at the same time. For some reason it does this darkening thing with the Samsung camera. We're not sure why it does that on playback. It's really kind of irritating. Um, for some reason it makes it much darker. And then when it stops, see how the light changes? This is probably a software issue that they'll be able to take and deal with but we're not sure why it keeps doing that it's a brand new phone um, and you can see here it's got some sort of light issue where it doesn't pull it to its initial brightness and then you're going to see here when it stops it goes back to this nice lit screen very weird 
I don't know if maybe that's just the film color. We haven't transposed it. But you can see here that the colors clarity are much better on the iPhone 4S. Now, the, we do like the video camera out in highlight situations, highlight situations. Um, uh, with the Samsung Galaxy S3, you won't be disappointed, but when it does come to a comparison between the two different products, the iPhone 4S is going to be better. Let's take a look at, uh, oh, the one thing to keep in mind, the uh, iPhone gets 30 frames per second, the Galaxy S3 operates at 29 frames per second. Uh, Music-wise, uh, the music system for uh, iPhone 5, I'll be honest, is a pain in the butt. Uh, even with the iCloud, uh, it does take time to download stuff. You run into a lot of buggy operations, as you can see here. The one thing I love about uh, the, the Samsung S3 is you're looking at... Let's see if we can find our Google Music. Google Music responds much better. It plays at 320 um, kilobytes per second, where you're looking at, I think, somewhere to 240 or something awful with the, uh, excuse me, the iTunes. Now, with the uh, iTunes, you know, you're really limited to what you can do, where this you can do much more and everything else in uh, interacting with your software um, and your music. You can also do different things where you can actually uh, search, play, make instant mixes. There's a whole lot more you can do with the music. So if you're really into music, I would definitely recommend the Samsung S3. We really think it wins on that level. Speaker-wise, one of the big things that is a fail for me with the Galaxy S3, and I don't mean an overall fail, but one of the things that would make me decide not to get the phone over the iPhone 4S is the speakers. Uh, the speakers are on the bottom of the iPhone 4S, and a lot of people don't give that much credit in its build and thought process that went into it. Um, what that means is that whether your phone is sitting down on its face or its back, you're going to be able to hear the sound coming out of the phone. The problem with the Samsung product is the speaker is in the back, right up in here. And so the problem you have is if you have the phone sitting on its back, you have a problem hearing. You also have a problem hearing if it's sitting away from you. I was doing a speakerphone call with a friend and, and chatting with them, and I had the phone facing away. It was kind of sitting up like this against my desk, and so I had the speaker, of course, facing away from me to the back. I was still having trouble hearing what he said. Now, given they do have something that's interesting on the phone with the Samsung Galaxy S3, where when you are calling, there's an activation that you can take and do that gives you an additional speaker volume. But it doesn't give you any additional speaker volume over other phones that we've seen. It actually just kind of brings it up to that speed and level. So I'm not sure what that's about. But the having the speaker buried on the back is an annoyance, an incredible annoyance. Um, and I, I really don't like it. If you want to listen to something, unless you're holding the phone up, uh, you've basically got the mu music moving away from you. One thing that is great about the iPhone 4S is if you are gaming and you have your phone, your hand curved around this area, the sound will come up to and at you. Now, camera-wise, one of the issues with the cameras is you've got the camera here, and the camera does sit recessed, so does the lens from the uh, iPhone back. So when you do set it down, you're you're going to tend to, unless there's stuff on the ground or if it's not a flat surface, you're going to tend to not scratch the iPhone lens. One of the problems I have with the, uh, with the Android products, a lot of them, and of course the Galaxy, is when you set this down on the edge, you're potentially scraping the lens of the camera and you're going to end up with a scraped uh, lens, which is going to really mess up your camera photos. I really don't like that. It just makes me buggy every time I have to set it down. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to scratch the camera lens. I always seem to have to be cleaning the Android lenses that are on the back that are mounted in this sort of situation, which is really irritating, where I find that the iPhone 4S, I don't have to clean the camera as much. When it comes to screen and gaming, if you're really into gaming and that's your big thing, let me tell you, the iPhone Galaxy S3 Definitely wins. Definitely wins. Uh, let's see if we can't pull up a nice game you guys can take and do. And of course, it just comes down to screen size uh, and being able to play a game. Uh, stuff is going to look really, really, really good on the uh, Galaxy S3. So when it comes to gaming, the uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 is going to win. Processors just as fast, uh, if not 
maybe a touch faster than the iPhone 4S given it's leapfrog. Um, <clears throat> but gaming wise, if you're a big gamer, you definitely like the Samsung. Uh, hopefully you use some headphones so you don't have to worry about the speaker as much. The speaker isn't bad. I just don't like that it faces away from you and it's hard to hear. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the other different things. OS updates. The one thing that bothers me about the Android product is I don't like to be treated like a second class citizen. I don't like to be told, hey, well, we've got a new OS system, but we'll get around to you when we want to. I really don't like that experience. <clears throat> I like how with the iOS system I get free updates, they come out usually on an annual basis, there's different updates that come out in between that tweak the system and software. I don't like how I can buy a phone and not have the latest software on it. <clears throat> now this does have ice cream sandwich on it with the Samsung S3, but guess what, they just came out with Jelly Bean. So already it's one OS behind. And what you have to do with the Android systems is you have to sit around and wait for the particular OS version to be made and applicable to your fragmented phone, whichever version it is. And you have to sit around and go, oh, this model has the update, oh, this model doesn't. I hate that. That's really annoying. It makes me resent the product. It makes me resent the phone. It makes me resent the OS system. Um, I just feel like I'm in a line and I'm treated just very poorly. That's my personal feeling about it. Some people don't mind it, I guess. They don't mind being toyed with. but. I, I don't like that. I, I, would, I like a solid OS system that I can always bet on, that I can always rely on. It's boom, boom, boom. It's always going to come out. It's going to work with the newest and latest phones for me. There's not that fragmentation issue. So that's something else to take and keep in mind. Now, with the uh, Play Store, the Play Store is really cool. Uh, it's fun to move around. It's fun to find stuff. It looks very, very beautiful. Um, and it's easy to find apps and everything else. Now, most people know the iPhone for uh, the iPhone itself has been around for, since 2005, so obviously it excels much more in uh, great uh, applications and apps being. So the one thing you have to deal with though with apps is of course the the developers are going to be making more products for the uh, iOS system. Uh, all the cool stuff seems to come out of the iOS system first. One of the big problems with the Android product, of course, the fragmentation. So app-wise, you know, this really isn't a difference between the Samsung Galaxy S3, but it is something you have to factor when doing the purchase between these two products. You're spending $500, so I know this runs long and we're doing in depth, but you're spending $500 for a device that you're going to keep for probably up to two years, so some of these decisions are important. Battery life. <clears throat> Better life on the iPhone 4S, even after a year of heavy, heavy use, runs really, really, really strong. Uh, the Android system, of course, tends to use battery life. Nothing has changed with the Samsung Galaxy S3. The battery life is good for you know roughly about a day or most of a day of use, depending upon how heavy you take and use it. Um, the one thing is nice about the Galaxy Samsung S3 is you do have a replaceable battery. So if you buy a spare battery, you can throw it in the back and away you go. Um, let's see, SIM card wise, um, you've got of course the back area there, uh, it's easy to pull off the back, put it in, uh, on the iPhone 4, you've got the same thing where you could just, uh, less easy, you can push in the pinhole, pull your SIM card out, switch it around. Uh, notification screens, uh, there's notification screens now on the iPhone 4S, they've updated to where they have that sort of, uh, context. Uh, notification screens are pretty nice. You've got the weather on there, all that good stuff. You can very quickly and easily get to what you need by clicking on something and opens it. I do like the notification screen. i got to tell you, much better, especially on the Galaxy Samsung uh, S3. And I'll show you why. One thing that they did that's really smart, and I haven't seen this on other Android phones, is they've got the uh, a lot of the things that you might want to adjust in settings very quickly uh, at the tap tops, he tap tops here. And you can actually see this slide across. We can go into airplane mode, power saving mode. We can tell it to sync, mobile data. We can lock the screen rotation, which is something I don't see in a lot of Android phones that you can access very quickly. GPS sound, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. You can very quickly get into uh, these areas without having to go into settings and a lot of different work. You can click the settings button, and that will take you into settings. I do like how the settings display and the look of it over other Android products. So I love how the the uh, settings are set up and just the look and the feel 
uh, of the Galaxy S3 over other Android products, so I'm very impressed with it in that way. Um, so I, I feel it has a whole lot more, it, just the colors appeal to me too, in the colors, the layout, how it works, um, as opposed to the notifications. You can see it's pretty boring, plain, and lifeless on the iPhone 4S. So I definitely like the Galaxy S3 settings and ability to adjust stuff. Calendar is very cool on the Galaxy S3. We like how there's this uh, area that comes out, and of course this will integrate with your Google products. If you're a big Google Gmail person, you're using Google Docs, you're using all the different Google products, the Samsung Galaxy S is probably more for you. I am a big uh, Google user, but I use a lot of it with my iPhone 4S. But I do like the Google integration with the Android phone, and wish there was more of it on the iPhone 4S and the iPhone uh, iOS system, I should say, in whole. Let's see. Um, that pretty much covers it between all the different the two different phones. We try to do a very in-depth thing, like I said, because you're spending five or six hundred bucks, so probably with tax and everything else that you might go into. We do love the Galaxy S3. I do feel it's one of the best products to come out of Samsung so far, and it's one of the best uh, on the Android app system currently as of date. Of course, that may change tomorrow when another phone gets issued. <laughs> but super love the Galaxy S3 uh, from Samsung. If you're an Android fan, you're looking for a phone, get this phone. It's an awesome phone. The AT&T 4G LTE service is awesome on it and uh, will give you great download, great upload speed and uh, everything else. The processor rocks. Um, when it comes to the processor between the two different devices, they, they seem very similar in their speed and quality and how they can take and do things. Now, in choosing between the two, I'm going to give you my personal opinion. Uh, the camera is very important to me in a phone. The camera definitely is tons better, both for video and photos, and low light, uh, light, any light situation, really, for the iPhone 4S. Uh, the build, I like the build of being able to get a uh, hard quality phone. I like the fact that it, it feels like a quality phone. I love the speakers. The speakers and sound are important to me in the thing where I can constantly hear them. I'm not having to play games with the phone to be able to hear the speaker that's in the back. I like getting the latest software. That's important to me. The feel of the phone is very is very quick and easy. Um, the one thing I do not like about the iPhone 4 is the screen size. I love the screen size of the Galaxy S3. That's where it really takes it home for me. The Google integration takes it home for me on the iPhone, on the Samsung S3. But I gotta tell you, camera video is very good. It's very good, but it just doesn't hold up to the iPhone 4S. In the end, I would spend my money on the iPhone 4S, or at this point in time, we're a couple months away from the iPhone 5. I would maybe wait, see if you can pick up the iPhone 5, because it's rumored to have a much bigger screen. And once it does that, it's really going to uh, put a challenge into the Android system because most of the Androids have the bigger screens. So, in the end, I'm still going to pick the iPhone 4S. The other reason I'm going to pick the iPhone 4 and the iOS systems is because without the fragmentation, the body style, they make so many more different toys, games, accessories, if you will, that you can add on to it with speaker systems, cases, uh, just about every imaginable thing you can do. Camera sliders, we just bought a camera slider um, that slides the camera back and forth. People build stuff for the iOS product because it doesn't change. There isn't that fragmentation of body style, there's that fragmentation of OS. So they tend to build for it because uh, Apple it seems to, will tend to spend two or three years with the same body style and of course the phones uh, probably last much longer than that. So the accessory uh, issues for all the different accessories and toys and fun things you can get with the uh, iOS product, the Apple product, we like that much more and it gives us a much better experience with the phone overall because we can constantly be looking and adding at toys. It seems like an endless array of toys and accessories you can get for the iPhone 4S where the biggest challenge with the uh, Android product is you can't do that. But we really love the Samsung Galaxy S3 phone, not to take away from it in any way, shape, or form. If you got rid of the iPhone 4, this would be one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Android phone. Um, it freaking rocks. I love the screen size, love the action on it. It's faster than most of the other Android phones that I've had. So I've been very impressed. If you're looking for an Android phone, you're sold on the Android uh, OS system, this is definitely the phone to take and get. It, it freaking rocks. I love this phone. Um, and you're going to see some comparisons on the Chris Voss show. We're going to compare it to some HTC phones, uh, a Nokia Lumia 900 or uh, Lumia 
yeah, Lumina 900 and a few other products that you'll get to see us compare it with. So be sure to check into that. I think the Sony phone. Um, check it out on the ChrisFossShow.com, the ChrisFossShow.com. Check out the other videos on our YouTube site where we'll be doing comparisons with Phone Fight. And uh, in the end, I like the iOS product. I'm going to stick with it. I can access a lot of the Gmail, Android, Google stuff through the iOS systems and uh, I'm pretty happy with the product overall and I think the iPhone 5 is going to be of course a great build that's going to compete with this but awesome phones probably top of their game in both their fields of OS uh, the Samsung Galaxy S3 the iPhone 4S be sure to check it out be sure to check in the chrisfossshow.com daily or else